Come here, give me a cheer if you're drinking tonight! Yeah. Yeah. I recently had a cut down drinking myself, I was drinking far too much. I think you know when you're drinking too much, when you find yourself drinking terrible drinks. Look, I went for a stage of drinking nothing but vodka Red Bull, which is essentially ADHD and narcolepsy in one beverage. <laughs> I'm so tired. Did somebody say conga? <laughs> from a little town about 20 minutes down the road, a little town called Gosport. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Gosport, Gosport is a sort of town where dreams are heavily frowned upon. <laughs> What's that, mate? You got a dream, have ya? You know what you need to do with that dream? You need to put it on a wall and plaster over it, because that's what you should be doing, plastering. None of this dream bollocks put down the foundations and pick up a fucking spanner. <laughs> Okay, Mum. <laughs> but Gospel is a strange place. I don't particularly like leaving the house that much in Gospel. Every time I go outside, something seems to happen. Like the other day, well, I went for a walk. Nice little walk. But what's the worst that can happen on a nice little walk? All of a sudden, I get approached by a geezer. Proper fucking geezer. <laughs> it's got all the geezer equipment, tattoos, fake gold jewellery, and aroma of male insecurity. <laughs> I think it's called Lynx Africa. <laughs> and he walks up to me, right, and this is honestly how he begins the interaction. Oi! Now, no sentence that begins with the word oi is ever going to go well, is it? It's never going to be, oi! Would you like a Ferrero Rocher? <laughs> so I said to the geese, what's the matter? He said, can you look after my dog whilst I go in the shop and buy some fags? I said, yes, because I was scared to say no. <laughs> and the geezer hands me his dog, which is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. He then hands me an open can of lager. Not part of the original deal, madam. And the geezer walks into the corner shop. And I am left outside this corner shop holding an open can of lager and a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And I don't know what come over me. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I got the urge to sign on. It was weird. <laughs> the best place to deal with these types of geezers, and these types of geezers don't particularly like me. Don't like me, right? They, they're incredibly homophobic towards me, and I'm not even gay, right? But these geezers, I'm not. These geezers. <laughs> Opportunity for peculiar reasons. Well, like the other day, I was outside wearing gloves. My geezer neighbour saw me. What are you wearing gloves for? To which I said, because it's cold. Which seemed like an appropriate response. To which he said, cold. Only gays get cold. <laughs> Only gays get cold. So all those times I thought it was a bit nippy. Turns out, just wanted some cock, didn't I? <laughs> See, people have assumed I was gay for the majority of me, I don't like I'm not gay, I'm a straight heterosexual married to a woman man. But sometimes I wish I was gay, because at least then my personality would make sense. Also, quite like parades, right? <laughs> but I think it's because I'm not your stereotypical manly man, not into manly things. Even when I was a kid, right, my dad wanted to play football. I wanted to join a performing arts group. He said, no, son, you've got to play football, put on the football boots. Didn't actually mind football boots on the right surfaces. You could use them as tap shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd have to play this stupid game every week, and then I was skinny, I was puny, all the other kids much bigger than me. They had muscles. They were man kids! Big, freaky man kids! <laughs> you know, the sort of kids who got pubes at the age of seven. <laughs> and every week, and I was always stuck in defence. I'm not a defender, am I? I can't even defend myself! <laughs> I wanted to play was goalkeeper. Mainly because that was the only appropriate time I was allowed to wear gloves. <laughs> oh, no, listen, 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 listen. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking when you're looking at me, you're thinking that guy is flexible. And you're right. I do actually have a bit of a party trick. I'm able to kick my leg pretty fucking high. I will demonstrate this for you right now. Ha! <laughs> I think I think you'll agree. However, I did recently have to retire this party trick. Too many people was getting hurt. For example, I was at my cousin's wedding. Now I had a bit, quite a bit to drink. Two half pints of lager in one glass, right? <laughs> I decided to have a little boogie. So I'm on the dance floor. I'm boogieing. I'm having a 
a good time. Everything's running smoothly. Right up until the point Kung Fu fighting comes on. <laughs> now when Kung Fu fighting comes on, the kicks come out. So I'm kicking all over the place. I'm going crazy. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. I'm kicking here. I'm kicking there. I'm kicking everywhere. People are loving it. I'm the highlight of the wedding. All of a sudden, my 78-year-old nan comes onto the dance floor. <laughs> now, I don't know why I did what I did, but I decided that it was a good idea to try and kick my leg <coughs> all the way over my nan's head. <laughs> I kicked my nan in the face. <laughs> Not just a little kick, a proper big boot to the chops, her false teeth and how she fell on the floor. My cousin started having a go at me. Nate, why did you kick your nan in the face? I said, listen, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't come to your wedding today with the sole intention of kicking my grandmother in the face. It just happened, I'm sorry, don't blame me. Blame the DJ, he's the one who put Kung Fu fucking fighting on. There was bound to be great tactics. <laughs> at which point my cousin looked at me sternly and said, Nath, you requested Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> I said, okay, you got me. I requested Kung Fu fighting, but I was not the only one. <laughs> Everybody was gone for a fight day. Eh? Oh, oh kicks were as fast as lightning. In fact, it was a little bit lightning. Like <laughs> I myself am a married man. Well, I've been married, but of course, like any married couple, me and my wife, we have our differences. For example, my wife, massive fan, massive fan, inspirational quotes. Loves an inspirational quote. You know the sort of quotes I mean? Live every moment. Laugh every day. Love beyond words. That kind of vomit and juice and bollocks is all over my flat. <laughs> Even on my mugs, on my mugs, it's nothing sacred. I can't have a cup of tea without feeling fucking inspired. <laughs> They've right opposite Asda, very convenient. However, I have, on a few occasions, accidentally, on a few occasions, accidentally, stolen from Asda. We've all done it, accidentally. You know, you're in Asda. You might get a little bit tired, so you grab what you need. You leave the shop, and then you realise, I didn't pay for this. <laughs> then you have that little debate in your head. Should I go back? Nah. <laughs> it's only a telly. We <laughs> background, I do find myself occasionally right, having quite working class opinions that I cannot shape. For example, I always feel a bit uneasy whenever I'm around rich people. I find myself hypocritically judging rich people far too harshly. Not that long ago, I was in a waitrose. First of all, I had no business being in a waitrose. <laughs> I was in this waitrose, and I see this couple, they were mega rich, filthy rich, and I was, you know, I knew they was rich because they laugh like rich people. <laughs> <laughs> and over at the woman I say to her husband one sentence that made my working class brain furious. This was a sentence. Sebastian! <laughs> Sebastian! Should we buy some inflatable liners for our villa that we own in the Maldives? Oh, the rage! <laughs> oh, this is all the rage! Oh, don't come off. Oh, you want to buy some lilos, do you? For your villa in the Maldives. Well, I hope you do buy those lilos. And I hope you place them too close to an open flame and they set a light and burn your fucking villa to the ground. <laughs> What's you and your precious 70 grand a year husband, who's probably having an affair with his secretary, lay on your memory foam mattress, wrapped up in your silk diamond encrusted sheets, drinking a 200 year old bottle of vintage fucking wine that you don't deserve, because you're probably just a tax avoiding beeping bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this in the middle of a waitrose. <laughs> a loaf of bread fell from beneath my jumper. <laughs> I'm going to it! it. <laughs> oh. So um, uh, now seems like an appropriate time to tell you that I work in a nursing home. <laughs> I look 
about all the granddads and grandmas that you've abandoned. <laughs> I live after people. <laughs> I live after people who don't live for Alzheimer's disease. Now, Alzheimer's is a terrible, awful disease that decays and rots the mind. It's tragic. It affects millions of people across the UK. There is nothing good about Alzheimer's disease, right? But it's not even just Alzheimer's. There are other things that happen to you when you get old that people don't care to mention. But before I started working in a nursing home, I had no idea about the possibility of a prolapsed anus. <laughs> what? Your anus can prolapse. <laughs> Did I miss a meeting? Was there a memo? <laughs> a lot of people in the room probably don't even know what a prolapsed anus is. Well, it's essentially where your anus comes out. Your anus comes out! <laughs> goes back in of its own accord. Out in, in, out in, in, out in. It's not that game at the fair. Whack them up. <laughs> but a lot more bloody disturbing, right? We don't know what mention prolapse anuses, do they? There's no charity for prolapse anus syndrome, is there? And what's called a concert for prolapse anus victims? God, I've written a fucking song about it, haven't I? <laughs> A medication can make your anus fall out. <laughs> Second cause, excessive straining. Third cause, now this one's a weird one, fear or extreme shock <laughs> can make your pensioner's anus prolapse. So next time you think it's a little bit of fun making nan jump. <laughs> Bad days in the nurse home, good days and bad days. And one day I had in particular, my worst day, one of those days where you start to go wrong from the get go. Well, I start my shift, 7 o'clock in the morning, 12 hour shift, 8 o'clock, rip my trousers. Massive gash in my trousers, I'd get their laundry team and stitch up my trousers. Right? After that, stuff just kept going wrong. 11 o'clock, piss in my eye, right? Half past four, seriously, half past four, I got attacked by Malcolm outside so the toilets. Malcolm's got dementia, he's a little bit aggressive. He jumped up, bit me on the neck, probably sunk his teeth in. I got worried if I wore this on vampires and I now turn into a pensioner. Right? <laughs> It's just bloody awful, right? And it eventually culminated about half past six in the evening. I'm in Margaret's room. Now, Margaret is the sweetest little old lady you would ever like to meet. Stereotypical, lovely old lady. Stinks of piss and biscuits, right? She's lovely. I'm in her room, right? And I'm trying to put on her stockings, which is difficult. I don't know if you're going to try to put stockings on an 89 year old swollen, cellulitis, famous leg. Well, imagine trying to put that little bit of film back on a pepperoni. <laughs> must have sat in something. <laughs> At which point I realised the stitching in my trousers had come loose and my bollock had made an appearance. <laughs> what do you do in that situation? My bollock is hanging out. Mark was confused. I'm frozen with shock. My anus is prolapsed. <laughs> she doesn't even know what it is yet. She thinks I've sat on a blood orange or something. <laughs> She works out, she's staring at 29 year old bollock. It's not just out a little bit, it's proper up. It's not making a cameo appearance, it's the style of the show. It's bollock on Broadway. So I'm there, desperately trying to put this imposter away, and I eventually get it away. I run out of the room, I slam the door down, not proud of it, but as soon as I left that room, I honestly thought to myself, thank fuck for Alzheimer's. <laughs> I don't want to remember that. Thanks very much, you've been absolutely amazing.